Let's be honest, Resident Evil Season 1 seriously freaking sucks. In Episode 1, the show starts off in the future, 2036, apparently 14 years after the end of the world, yet people still exist and the planet is still here. Not much of an end, huh? Maybe the end of civilization? Thank goodness the internet still works in a post-apocalyptic world. I guess someone is still paying all the electricians and engineers to keep the infrastructure up and running. Our main character Jade lives in a smart home of the future, a homeless person's tent with Wi-Fi capabilities. There's no outlets though, so how does she keep all her gadgets charged? Couldn't tell you, apparently all the electrical grids are still viable after 14 years of a post-apocalyptic society. Jade puts a wounded bunny out in front of her and awakens all the zombies of the area. But the bunny yeets out of the way of the zombies. The zombies don't notice Jade literally 10 feet in front of them until she conveniently cuts her arm. After which the horde of zombies Naruto run at her. I guess zombies only go after the smell of blood. Yeah, if you're not bleeding, they're no threat to you in this story. I like how we've introduced our main character as self-sufficient and immediately shown her nearly dying due to a horde she attracted in the first place. How did she survive the last 14 years? After escaping the zombie horde, Jade is attacked by a giant caterpillar. What? The show then jumps back 14 years to 2022 when Jade was much younger. The next 30 minutes is a backstory arc of how Jade and her sister Billy were bullied in school, moved into a new neighborhood they felt uncomfortable in, and how Jade's father is actually the main scientist at Umbrella Corp. Jade in present time gets ragdolled by the giant caterpillar and knocked out in the process. She wakes up in some high-tech hideout that she's been brought back to by the scavengers that discovered her unconscious. It looks like a car repair shop. It's on the outskirts of an area infested with zombies so she can't leave. I mean, she survived 14 years in zombie infested areas, but this situation is apparently just too much to handle. The show can't seem to decide how it wants to tell its story as we switch back and forth between high school gossip girl and zombie Mad Max. Billy is in trouble with her bully and gets taken to the office for a parent counselor meeting. The best scene of the entire episode is when Wesker flops his massive dong out and wins the argument against Billy's bully and her father. We learn that Billy is a vegan and that she has an issue with Umbrella Corps when she finds out that they do animal testing. Jade and Billy decide to break into Umbrella Corps and save the animals they believe are being mistreated. They end up releasing an infected animal and Billy ends up dying in the process and becoming patient zero. So much for saving the animals, you've just annihilated the entire human race and all the animals and bugs on the planet. We jump back to Jade being held captive by the scavengers. She wants to leave, but they won't let her go. Umbrella Corps gets a flat tire and stops at the local mechanic only to find out that Jade is there. They don't like that Jade was held captive and decide to murder every car mechanic at the shop. Jade is grateful for Umbrella coming to save the day, but ultimately decides to still run away from them and figures jumping into a horde of zombies is a better option than going with them back to wherever they want to take her. Also, did you know that Rami Malek played as the stunt double for Jade in this show? Huh. I'm actually on these guys' side. Yeah, if it wasn't for her in the first place, the world wouldn't have been thrown into utter chaos. In episode two, the show starts off with Jade jumping off a makeshift building some 100 feet in the air. Surprisingly, she lands on solid metal and doesn't die. She's still trying to escape the clutches of the car mechanics and Umbrella Corp. She sure is a popular one, isn't she? She ends up escaping. We then flash back to when Billy and Jade broke into Umbrella Corp as kids. Turns out Billy wasn't dead after all. Wow, so believable. A zombie dog that can break through solid Solid metal doors doesn't kill a kid after thrashing her around by the neck. Well, it's good for the story. Sure. The girl's father shows up just in time. The show doesn't explain how he went from a deep sleep to being the only one alerted that the lab has been broken into, but he somehow makes it there within minutes of the dog getting out. We then learn that Wesker has a red shower fetish as he bathes in the blood of the dead zombie dog. What? The f Anyways, back in present times, we learn that Jade is trying to get out of the area she's in and tried to find a smuggler to get her into France. Jade finds a lady that can help, but she has a dilemma. Her husband is a zombie chained by the hand in the bathroom. Jade ends up going back into the bathroom for some reason and the zombie husband gets loose. Who didn't see that coming? The zombie husband ends up going after his wife and Jade saves the day by killing the zombie. The lady gets mad that Jade killed her husband and demands she leave immediately. What? the frick is wrong with people? Love makes you do crazy things, man. I guess. We then get to the flashback again where we learn that Billy needs to be treated by her father before something bad happens. Past Jade learns from an old disgruntled Umbrella employee that there have been cases at Umbrella of employees getting bitten by animals and going on violent rampages. We then see Billy punch a guy in the face at a park for not giving her dog back. She must be turning into exactly what that guy was just talking about with Jade. A Resident Evil zombie. In episode three, future Jade continues continues to get hunted down by Umbrella Corp. Everywhere this company goes, they just annihilate everyone around her for absolutely no reason. A critical plot point is revealed when Jade finds herself stuck in a cargo container with a family and we learn that alcohol 
is now illegal in this post-apocalyptic world. Huh? Yeah. I guess booze is still completely unreasonable when surrounded by a society of zombies in an ending world. Turns out Umbrella is not only an environmental threat, but an HR disaster as Wesker's boss tells him she's a great lay. That's gotta be sexual harassment. We then get to see Billy going through puberty as her hormones rage and she starts to experience mood swings and angst around fellow students. Oh wait, it's just the virus from the dog bite causing her to be angry. Hmm, shockingly similar to puberty. Couldn't Umbrella have picked a scarier person to represent their muscle? Seriously, this guy is just not intimidating in the slightest. The human smuggling caravan gets stopped and future Jade is forced to make a run for it with her fellow comrades. As they make a run for it, the entire tunnel gets bombarded by liquors. The liquors start going after everyone instantly and kill many in the process. But Jade must have some magical gaze because one of the liquors stops his instantaneous murderous attack just to growl at Jade and stare lovingly into her eyes, giving her all the time she needs to run away. Billy's symptoms worsen as she starts to lose her mind during class and trip massive balls in the bathroom. Future Jade is then attacked by a giant zombie spider! I mean, it's a cool monster, but the show is coming across as if it doesn't have faith it'll have a second season. So it's just dropping in as many classic monsters as possible from the game franchise. I appreciate the fan service, but the story is still lacking a lot. No amount of CGI can make up for poor writing. Billy freaks out when Jade tries to console her by telling her that she found out that a guy at Umbrella got bit like she did and he turned into a raving lunatic killing people three days after being bitten. Yeah, that sure would calm me down and make me feel better. Future Jade gets captured by yet another group, a French rebellion that hates Umbrella. In episode four, Jade and Umbrella Jack Black are taken to the secret lair of the French rebellion where they meet their leader, Salt Bay. I guess in a world where zombies are eating people alive, there's no real desire to watch a dude cut meat. The French Rebellion practices their haunted house routine with real chainsaws while Jade and Jables watch in horror. The Rebellion is doing this to feed their captive horde of zombies. Dinner and a show. Jables decides that he wants a turn to be the badass as he rampages through the compound, murdering Frenchmen and zombie alike. This would have been a pretty cool scene if I hadn't already seen it in Kingsman. Past Jade and Billy are in hot water when the disgruntled umbrella Delacour whistleblower tracks them down through their social media. He explains to them that their father, Wesker, had died 13 years ago and was keeping himself alive through use of the drug he developed. That must be what the Queen of England is doing. What? Dude, look at her. She's been a ghoul since the 90s. Future Jade is cornered by the horde of zombies that have been chasing her through the compound. Luckily, though, one single frag grenade is enough to take out the entire horde. But wait, it won't go off! And then it does! We then see our stalwart hero Jack Black fall to the hands of the zombie horde. Past Jade and Billy are frantically trying to return home before the timer counts Billy's last seconds as a human. But just when Billy thinks that she's about to turn into a zombie, Jade reassures her that the timer went off five minutes ago and that she's in the clear. In episode five, Wesker tortures the whistleblower at the command of his boss, Evelyn. While he's tied up at work, past Jade and Billy are searching their father's room for clues about the secrets the whistleblower revealed to them. Jade's hacker not boyfriend helps her get into the system while giving the weirdest throwaway line. He says the reason he's so smooth with the ladies is because he has two moms. Dude, what? Jade and Billy are put to the test when they find a letter from Wesker. It's a cryptic clue that will help the girls escape their inevitable capture. They're then put through several fun puzzles in a Sherlock Holmes montage. So Wesker really was a fun dad all along. They finally get into the basement and discover video evidence that the rumors of old Raccoon City were real. Wesker's failsafe activates when the girls are trapped in the basement and all the evidence is burnt to a crisp. When Wesker finally returns home from work, the girls knock him out and strap him to a chair for questioning. Oh, how the turntable... Never mind. He gives the girls a rundown on the T-virus and how it affects certain people. And what, that's like, what, COVID? What's COVID? No idea. Umbrella Corps shows up and captures Jade once more. In an actually surprising twist, Billy is still alive and takes Jade back to their base for questioning. In episode six, the badass persona Billy put on is immediately torn down and she lets Jade go. She tells Jade that the virus is still affecting her system and she's not really immune. But it's been like 14 years since she was infected. How bad could it really be? Jade reunites with her family and friends as they take off in their ship. Jade teams up with another scientist to try and find an enzyme that can combat the T-virus. After countless tests, they finally have a breakthrough. 
Jade discovers an enzyme that repels the T-Virus and one that attracts it. But the show then makes it even harder to root for our main character as she brings a zombie corpse onto the ship to test on. Oh, that's sure to go well. It doesn't. In episode 7, we find out that Albert Wesker is just one of many clones, each of them with their own quirky personalities. Okay, that one is just Blade. The leader of Jade's post-apocalyptical community, Larry David, meets with the leader of Umbrella Corps, Evelyn. He tries to posture and get Umbrella to back off, but they aren't backing down. In the past, Wesker is captured and questioned by Evelyn while one of his clones breaks out of his chambers. The clone picks up the girls from school and gives us the best scene of the entire show when he rants about the hypocrisy of Olive Garden's unlimited breadsticks. Yeah, if they're supposed to be unlimited, why do they limit you to one basket at a time? While Jade is meeting with Evelyn to make a deal, we get introduced to what is absolutely the worst, most cringe-inducing scene we've witnessed since starting this channel. No, seriously, we know it's only been a week, but there's no way anything else could top how bad this is. Confrontation brews when Billy reveals that Evelyn is under her control and that Umbrella has no intentions of letting Jade's ship go. Jade retaliates by smashing open a vial of the zombie attracting enzyme, causing zombies to immediately swarm the area. I guess they can smell the enzyme from miles away literal seconds after it touches open air. In episode 8, we continue with flashbacks and all hell breaks loose at future Billy's compound. I can't believe this entire season was one giant flashback sequence. That's seriously something that should have been wrapped up in the first couple of episodes at most. I'm still not sure what the buildup was for this season. It's like a big pilot episode leading us into season two that will finally start an arc that matters. But that season will probably never come. A zombie crocodile is awakened for what is sure to be an epic final battle. And then we get back to the flashbacks. Woo! Yeah, baby! Every time the show gets slightly interesting, it gets nipped in the bud with another flashback scene! Thank goodness! Just when I thought I was about to finally be entertained, we get to watch this boring flashback again. The zombie crocodile appears after everyone is dead? Why would you write it that way? What is the point of constantly boring us and letting us down? We get an emotional monologue from Billy as she and Jade have a standoff over Umbrella taking Jade's daughter and using her genes for their gain. Billy then decides to shoot Jade as Umbrella no longer needs her. She just shoots her in the stomach though as Netflix still doesn't know if this show will get a season two. I just realized that after an entire season of constant flashbacks and flash forwards, we still have no idea how the zombie apocalypse even started. This whole show was eight one-hour-long episodes that literally never get to the point. True. True. 